welcome back. You might notice that Chris Amos is here with me because he bought a car. And he didn't just buy any car, he bought another Volvo. And you might think, Chris, why, why buy another Volvo? You've got a beautiful Volvo in great shape and it's perfect. Your 850R is like concourse quality. But it's an automatic and Chris is a man of refined tastes. I have dreams about five-speed 850s. Yeah. I heard from you a day ago saying, here's my flight, pick me up at Logan. I'm like, done, let's go get a car. So I bought it on Bring a Trailer. And the first like, well, how, many, how long are cars on Bring a Trailer? Like six days? Yeah. The first like five days, 23 hours and 45 minutes, nothing happened. And then the last two minutes. It doubled, more than doubled in value. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a bidding frenzy. We are like five miles away from the car. Let's go pick it up. <laughs> First impressions, Chris. It's, I mean, it looks exactly like my car. <laughs> I feel really dumb because I just learned that they actually never brought any manual 850Rs to the country. So I thought, I thought we were just buying some rare unicorn car that like, oh, only a few of them came into the US. What I'm finding out is that none of them came into the US. And what we're actually doing is driving a swapped car. It's just that the work has been done for us. But so far, this is like literally- I just had the a one-two shift chasm. I'm sorry, I can see it in your face. And this is the smoothest car. It's pretty smooth. This is outrageous, Chris. Which way should I go again? Uh, he said left. Ah, it's as good as I dreamed it would be. That was perfect. How's the 3-2 feel? Right. Shifter feels good. Yummy. It's a little bit over this way, but it's not like too noticeably so. And maybe it was, I don't know. Yeah, it it's, does. It's like, awesome. It, it's definitely offset to the right quite a bit. Yeah. Like, so first gear is like third. Clutch catch point is really low. It just tells me it's a newer clutch. believe what happens next. All right, so Chris is from Michigan. Now in Michigan, you can drive for 14 days, 14 days without license plates, as long as you have a bill of sale, a title and proof of insurance. This is absolutely not the case in New England, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, they see no plates. They assume car is stolen. You're a criminal. You're coming with us. So we managed to get the car from New Hampshire down to my place in Massachusetts. I don't know why I'm telling you this story. This just seems like admission of guilt. But anyway, the car was insured and technically registered in Michigan. But the whole way down, we had to be like, I had to block him. So if we saw a police officer on the side of the road, I would pull, I'm an accessory to a crime. Okay, so we'd pull, I'd, I'd pull up like next to him like this. So we'd pass the cop. And then as we passed him, I'd, I'd get back in like that so that way they couldn't see his license or lack of license plate. So Chris gets back, we decide like we're not driving the car. It would have been fun to do a lot of shooting with the car while we were here, but we had no plates. And yes, you could just throw another plate on the car, but that's like an even larger admission of guilt because now what you're saying is like, hey, cop, this car has a plate, but it's the wrong plate. And I know it's the wrong plate and I'm trying to deceive you. So it's like more genuine to just not have a plate and explain what the situation is than to have a plate and, and, and try to lie. That's fraud. The next morning he woke up at 3.30 and departed from my house, drove 12 hours straight back to Michigan and made it there without a single police interaction. I'm still blown away by this. It's like I would have been pulled over 10 times and I would have had to be explaining myself, sweating bullets like I was a criminal, even though I wasn't. 
Before I sign off, I do want to say one thing about this car, and that it is the smoothest ending... Wow, that wasn't right. Before I sign off, there's one thing I do want to say about this car, and I don't know if it will ever really be captured on video, but this is the smoothest running engine I think I've ever experienced. It's like, it's like a video game engine. It's like, it's like you start it and you can tell everything's perfectly lubricated and everything's in sync and it, 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 it just be, oh my God. It feels like you could just like hold it in your hands and it would just be like, oh. It's good. This car is so good and I'm really proud of Chris because he's been talking about this manual 850R since I've met him and he's had this automatic one and it's just never been a really good business case to swap it because it's like a $4,000 job. But if you're able to find someone who's already done it and taking care of the car, he's basically doing a manual swap with his car except instead of swapping the transmissions, he's just swapping cars. It's the same color. So if he does a paint correction on this one, it's gonna look exactly like his car. Super proud of him, love him to death. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and you could buy these below. You could, or you could go to my patreon.com and support me. So, thank you. Bye. You know, I never do this, but let's, let's read some mean comments. Oh, this is a good one. So my favorite video of all time for like shit talk is Eddie's 283 horsepower Civic, the eighth gen. And that car was like, it had so much work done to it. It was incredible and it was really fast. And I even showed the dyno sheets uh, from Brent Tuning and like, there was so much shit talk about this car. It's, it's long dead. So if you're wondering what happened to the car, it, it went through a puddle and he got on throttle and it hydro locked. So that's what happens when you introduce water to an engine. So Alexander says, you're full of shit and it's annoying blatant lying because you didn't build it. I could see if you had all the mods plus the 85 and a tune, but probably would only make 240 wheel. Like, I don't know how to prove this to you more because like I showed you the dyno, so I, I don't know what else to do, um, which is why I don't respond to these ones. Because like, end of the day, you can believe whatever you want, but if this car wastes you on a racetrack, then your complaints don't matter. Here's a mean comment I don't know how to feel about. Planet Fabulous comments, lots of warning lights on, on Eddie's Civic. And then Garlic Jeans says, shut you gay ass up. Now, Planet Fabulous is complaining a little bit about a race car with a bunch of warning lights on. Like, yeah, it's gonna have some warning lights. But Garlic Jeans defends me by saying, shut your gay ass up. I don't know how to feel about that. I appreciate the defense, but maybe we should go about that in another way, Garlic Jeans, thanks. And finally, stuck in the Ford Raptor off-roading gone wrong, the snow video, EJ says, Ford should have a policy that they don't sell Raptors to anyone wearing skinny jeans. These guys look so fugazi. Now, I, I don't know what fugazi means. I am Italian, but I don't know what that means. But no one in the video is even wearing skinny jeans. I'm pretty sure like David's wearing Carhartts. How baggy do your jeans need to be? If those are skinny jeans, then like, are you just like wearing like bucket size overalls? Imagine if Ford didn't sell cars because of how people were dressed. They were like, actually, we don't need the profits, bro. You look fugazi.